Hi all, Mark Azelstein with Uncork Ventures. So I'll hold this up so you can get a look, although you have a bottle of this in your wine club shipment this month already. So this is an Odonata Malbec. Uh, so I'll leave the vineyard kind of explanation for the newsletter. There's kind of a lot of information about um, a Lodi vineyard and kind of how Malbec might end up in Lodi in the first place. Uh, long story short um, is that um, Malbec tends to rot and mold um, and some other bad stuff. If it's too cold, Lodi is a logical place to grow a grape that needs it to be warm enough to dry out completely on both sides of the bunches. Um, so I do want to, as part of this intro, I want to focus a little bit on Odonato the winery. Um, so the winemaker's name is Dennis. Um, it's a uh, kind of winemaker as owner, as general manager, as you know, the dude's doing pretty much everything down there. Um, so they're based down in Salinas, um, which if you're not familiar with California geography is I don't know, maybe an hour south of San Jose or so, so a couple hours out of major wine growing regions, as most people think of them. But Santa Cruz Mountains is right there. Um, and Dennis has kind of got this kind of cool story. Um, so he has a business degree, not a viticulture degree. Um, he met um, the folks at Santa Cruz Mountains Vineyards, um, which is a venerable name in the space. Um, and Santa Cruz Mountains is actually pretty close to Salinas and some of these other Central Valley spots. Um, and so he learned to make wine as an old school internship. Um, and I think that's one pretty cool part of the wine industry and it's something that we've been exploring a little bit here as part of the wine club of late. Um, in that, you know, there's a lot of people that go to Davis or go to Cal Poly or go to Fresno and they learn to make wine there. Um, but there's this whole other subset of winemakers and it's maybe half or 60% or so um, of folks that learn it as an internship, um, as a trade. Um, and as we kind of move through the industry, um, and more, quite honestly, more places are starting viticulture programs. Cal Poly didn't have one um, when I was in school, as an example, and they have one now. Um, that's really highly respected. Um, so you're getting more winemakers from actual winemaking programs. Um, so what happens with those guys? So if you go to Davis, you can get the big job. You know, the job with health insurance, the job that pays the bills, um, the job at a winery that people have actually heard of. Um, what happens if you're somebody who learned it as a trade? You might intern or make 10 or 12 bucks an hour, maybe 15 in California here pretty quickly, um, but you're not paying the bills unless you go out on your own and do something a little bit different and sell some wine. Um, and so that's kind of where wine club wise, we end up doing maybe more of those than I would set out to do um, because those are the folks that fit the profile, I think, what, of what people are looking for. And Odonata definitely fits into that. Um, so you'll see an interesting kind of take um, from Odonata and Dennis on a number of varietals, um, but he's trying to be varietal specific in a lot of ways, especially on the red wine side. And I think that's interesting. You know, so many winemakers want to cut their teeth on either Cabernet or Pinot, um, or they want to show you what a great blender they are, and they're going to make a Bordeaux blend with 80% Cabernet. Um, so I think it's interesting when somebody is kind of zigging when everyone else is zagging. Um, Malbec's not easy to sell. Um, and I think he'd probably tell you that. Um, from a business perspective, there's probably easier things to do than make Malbec or Riesling or all this, these other kind of second or third tier grapes that people don't ask for specifically. Um, it's a smaller subset of the market. Maybe it's easier to make sales if you're not fighting all the big boys that people have heard of, maybe not. Um, so that's an interesting discussion for a later date. But um, I do think it helps tell the tale of, um, you know, what do people do when they actually need to or want to make a living in the wine industry, but they don't have that viticulture degree that would allow them to go work for Kendall Jackson, um, making, you know, millions of barrels of wine every year. Um, and, you know, what does that lead to as an industry? And I think it's mostly, it's a, it's a really positive thing and I hope it's something that we don't lose. Uh, so once again, Marcus is in with Unacork Ventures. Um, if you're a member of Special Selections or Reserve Selections Wine Club, you'll see an Onanata. Um, almost everyone's gonna get them all back um, just because I think it's an interesting story. Um, this is one of the better versions I've had from California. Um, it fits a good kind of spot of tannin versus lack of sweetness. Um, and mouthfeel. Um, and I think you'll notice that as soon as you open it up. Um, it's not kind of, uh, sometimes you get French Malbecs and they're so clear that you can, they're so light you can almost see through them. Sometimes South American Malbecs are overpowering tannin wise. I think this is a nice intro to the varietal for something that I think is the style that people should be going for if they want to sell. Uh, so once again, Marcus is team with Uncork Ventures and thanks again for your membership.